The lower basin of the Colorado River is now operating in a tier two shortage condition for the first time ever. That means states like Arizona and Nevada must now reduce their consumption of the river's water. Camille Kalimlim Tuton is the commissioner for the Bureau of Reclamation. Camille, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me here today. So explain the importance of the Colorado River to the West. The Colorado River starts in Wyoming and ends in Mexico. 40 million people rely on this resource, as well as uh, millions of acres of farmland that are used in the Colorado River system. And so as far as the values we have in the Colorado River system, the 40 million Americans, the tribes that call it their home, as well as the ecosystem like the Grand Canyon are part of the Colorado River Basin. So what's the current drought uh, situation like? How bad is it? So we are getting a reprieve at the moment with these rains that we're seeing, but it doesn't take away the years, if not decades, of drought. What we're seeing across the Colorado River Basin and across the West is that snow is falling at higher elevations, it's hotter, it's melting sooner, and the soils are dry. And so that means that the water is not making it into our rivers and reservoirs. When you couple that with low reservoirs, you have a situation where the hydrology and our bank accounts in the form of our reservoirs are low and we need to look at what we can do about it. So are you mandating um, mandatory cutbacks in, in water usage? So what we're looking at from the Biden-Harris Harris administration is first relying on our partnerships, working with basin states, working with the tribes, working with the country of Mexico on how we can find a consensus solution to be able to manage the river. We're utilizing the significant resources that President Biden has provided through the bipartisan infrastructure law, as well as the Inflation Reduction Act. That's a $13 billion investment in the Bureau of Reclamation. We are a $1.5 billion agency annually. And so that is a generational investment to allow for sustainability. And finally, we're looking at our actions, our operations, so that should the hydrology demand that we act, that we have the tools available to us. So what happens if not enough is done? What, what, is, what does that mean? What, what could happen? Well, what we're watching right now is the hydrology. And in being able to do that, it allows you to see what the, the system looks like. But as we talked about already, we're starting from a low point with the reservoirs. And so what we're doing now is looking at and having conversations about what the operations can be to be ensure that we can move the water where we need to. This water's moving long distances. As we said, it started in Wyoming, it ends in Mexico. And so that requires a lot of collaboration and communication among all the basin states and stakeholders. You, uh, last fall you visited some impacted areas. Mm -hmm. What were people telling you? Well, I think, you know, what is really important about this and why we're talking about the actions is 40 million people depend on this resource. Farmers are worried about their ability to, to grow crops and in turn that feeds America. What's really interesting about the Bureau of Reclamation is we are from and live in these communities that we serve. So these are our neighbors, these are our families, and they're worried. Um, but. I am confident in the investment of our resources as well as in working as a whole of government and with Congress, we can find solutions to, to a path forward for all of those Americans who depend on this resource. You mentioned Mexico, um, so there's that international component there. How are you working with the government of Mexico on this? So we have a treaty with Mexico uh, on how we work together on the Colorado River. Um, we are in constant communication with the International Boundary Water Commission, which is part of the State Department, and having conversations. But most importantly, as we see the information, um, as we see the science, as we see the hydrology, we are also having those conversations alongside our partners in Mexico. So we're all on the same page as far as what's happening on the ground. I wonder what the, the short-term and the long-term prognosis is. Are we going to be con continuing to see these drought conditions and, and these dire conditions for the Colorado River, or are you hopeful that things will turn around? The science is showing us that the hydrology is drier. And so what we're able to do, especially with investments in the bipartisan infrastructure law, $8.3 billion, half of that 
uh, 1.6 billion, which is 8.3 over five years, we've spent in the Colorado River Basin investing in making infrastructure better, water recycling, enough for the city of San Francisco. Um, so we're, what we're looking at is letting the science lead, working with our partners to communicate our actions, but also making significant investments to be able to have long-term sustainability in operating our systems. But in the short term, there does need to be um changes to how people live as far as watering their lawns or having swimming pools, things like that? Every drop counts. So whether it's in cities to remove ornamental turf, whether it's in farming practices so that you're able to be more efficient with your irrigation use, all that water in the system is for everybody. And so all of the efforts together and we have the resources to bring to those efforts help to find a more sustainable path in the Colorado River system. And just wrapping up, you know, the, the Bureau turns 120 years old this year. How has its mission changed? I, I would imagine things are pretty different now. When we were founded 120 years ago, it was to be able to reclaim the West. Now we're the largest water deliverer in the nation and provide enough power for three and a half million homes. We take that mission seriously and I'm exceptionally proud that Part of that, too, is not just the West, but in supporting the ecosystems and economies of the entire country. Camille, thanks so much for joining us. Thank nice to talk to you. Thank you very much for the time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.